it's funny when you grow up not in a city, you, you know everyone lives around you. Being from Jersey, to me, is all about existing within like earshot of the greatest city in the world. I always say everything that's great about New York City comes from New Jersey. I remember being a kid and, and I was making pasta, which I shouldn't have been and the water was starting to boil over and I had no idea what to do. And I, I, like, I didn't know if, I didn't, it didn't occur to me to turn the fire off or to move it off. And we were running to get my neighbor and um, the people across the street and they, they turned the fire off. But if I grew up in uh, Manhattan, I'd probably just have burned the house down. Growing up in a place that is like forced to be in the shadow of something is really special because there's so much energy that comes with that. Anyway to your wild home. I remember putting things all over the walls in my room. I used to have band practice in this room. We had a drum set right there, and then we'd have guitar amps and everyone sort of set up. I practiced here up until kind of recently, actually. I made records here up until recently. I made most of the Bleachers record here. I like working at home. So there was a lot of music in our house, and we also grew up in the 70s, um, so there was a lot of Led Zeppelin, Beatles, and Janis Joplin. So both, both kids grew up in a, in a really musical environment. Jack was a kid, it started when he was really little, he collected rocks and geodes, and he did it with a dedication and a passion. Then he picked up his dad's guitar, which he gave to him, and he started to play, and he started with his half an hour lessons a week. I started playing guitar because my dad played guitar. When we were young, he would just always be playing around the house. And so my sister took guitar lessons, and I started taking guitar lessons. It just was something that I always knew he would think was really cool. You never had to ask him to practice. His mom used to say he'd lock himself in the room for four, five, six hours a day and just practice. Jack's like maybe 12 or 13, and he's yeah, he's not that good. He's like, he's like, okay. And he has this electric guitar. I remember actually hearing, I think it was R.E.M.'s Monster, was the frequency Kenneth. I heard that song on the radio, and I thought, that was my first memory of hearing like a fuzzy guitar tone and thinking like, I gotta figure out how to do that. And one day I, in this house, I came home, and he's getting the craziest sounds out of his room that I, I, I just couldn't believe. I think it was called like Hyper Fuzz. It was like a dumb pedal, but at the time it was so cool, and I brought it home. And I, and I played it and it, like, it sounded like R.E.M. and Green Day and I was so blown away by that sound. So one day we're, we're playing and we used to play a lot together and he, and he, sa and he shows me something on, on lead and, and he says, play this. And I said, well, give me, a, give me an hour and I'll practice it and then I'll come back and we'll play. And he goes, and he was really serious. He wasn't being sarcastic. He goes, well, don't you, um, can't you just play it? Don't you just think it and it comes out? He was, he was so in love with the music. There was no stopping him. I think I started with Van when I was like nine or 10. I don't remember, it was a long, long time ago. I'm, I'm very connected as a child, both with like music lessons and just school in general, with this feeling of like, I'm walking in, I don't know the thing I'm supposed to do. And, 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 and but with Van, I was always able to like talk my way around it. I mean, it was, it's bizarre to think about, because when I met him, I literally didn't know how to play guitar. Like I remember sitting with him and like, I couldn't do anything. And I'll never forget he had this crazy obsession with Green Day. What was the first song that we learned? When remember? I Come Around. Right. Do you remember that? Yeah. It had an E minor in it. Four chords. Yeah. Like G, D, E minor, C. C. And right. I played it for you and you were like, yeah, this is incredibly easy. But then we learned the solo in something. I remember that. I referenced the Beatles more than, more than anything now. So you would say a lot of your songs, even with Bleachers, you have some Beatle influence probably Always. all the time. Because and it's and just... every, everything I record, all their recordings, George Martin's, what Oh he yeah, did he was a genius. Completely unbelievable. The way those records sound, I think nothing has ever sounded as good. He since. was way, way ahead of his time. He's incredible. And then you taught all my friends how to play guitar. Right, exactly. Benjamin Amsterdam, Jonathan Goldberg. Yeah. Those the were... list goes on and yeah, on yeah. and on. Basically That's every right. Jew in New Jersey. <laughs> We learned fun as soon as I found that you were, really? that was your song. What did you right? think of it? Were you like a little easy? You... It was easy, but okay. they couldn't wait to learn. <laughs> they couldn't wait to learn it. Immediately we learned that. I still have that first electric guitar that we bought. Wow. Fender Squire. 
Could I just touch it? It's still it's still sitting in my room. I gotta. Where in what Cliff Lake? Yeah. Same God. one. God. Yeah. It's crazy. It was a unique time. I think particularly in the suburbs too, I don't think it was a typical household. And as Jack developed and grew, it became a real source of pride. Anytime I don't fully screw something up or I do a good job at something, I get texts from some of our neighbors. So like, you know, if you post something on social media and it's something that someone might want to text you about, then they will, which always makes me feel connected to a world I want to be connected to. The more you can keep family and friends who've known you for a long time involved in your day-to-day -day affairs, I think the better and the more it just constantly connects you to who you are. State Farm celebrates great artists and the good neighbors back home who help make them who they are today. For part two of Jack Antonoff's artist story, go to NeighborhoodSessions.com.